Welcome. In this video, we'll learn how to multiply two numbers using quantum Fourier transform. Although there are many algorithms for this purpose, the one I present is among the simplest that captures the essential theme of other algorithms. In addition, I'll show a new decomposition of doubly controlled rotation. Suppose we want to multiply two n-bit numbers a and b. We start with the binary expansion of a. Using distributivity, we can express multiplication as summation of n terms. We proceed by maintaining a partial sum. Then we add next terms one by one as follows. Finally, the partial sum equals the desired product. The quantum algorithm we describe, follows this idea, but uses quantum Fourier transform as the means. We start with 2n zeros as the product can require up to 2n bits to represent. We apply quantum Fourier transform to these set of qubits followed by applying necessary gates such that the we keep getting quantum Fourier transform of partial sums as follows. Eventually, we have quantum Fourier transform of the product AB. Then, we apply inverse quantum Fourier transform to obtain the desired product. It might appear that we are adding different new terms to each partial sum. Each term when expressed using 2n bits has an interesting pattern. We start with appending n extra bits to b at the beginning. Notice that this does not change the value of b. Then each multiplication by 2, shifts the bits of b towards left. How does it help? For the time being let us ignore the bits of a that have been multiplied to each term. In general, each term has a factor which is a power of 2. Power of rotations play crucial role in quantum Fourier transform. We obtain the circuit that rotates a state by an angle 2 pi j by 2 power k in the fifth video on quantum Fourier transform. You can pause the video here and watch that video first if you have not seen yet. We extend this logic to obtain to account for the extra power t of 2. Here we start with zt plus 1 gates and go all the way to zt plus k gates. This new family of gates will be used later. We write the Fourier transform gates by only the phase terms which corresponds to the bits of the power J. As an intermediate step, we extend the addition algorithm we learned in the sixth video. In shifted addition, we add a n 2 power t times b. We assume a to be a 2 n bit number, and b to be n bit number. Extend 2 power t times b by appropriate number of 0 bits such that we have in total 2 n bits. The missing detail in our strategy is just controlled rotations of the qubits in the Fourier transform of a. We rotate individual qubits such that each exponential factor adds appropriately. Remember that, the quantum Fourier transformed states are marked by partial bits from right to left. The quantum Fourier transformed state of A, 2n-1, only depends on A0. 
as the last bit is 0 and 2 power t times b, the last bit of the Fourier transform is unaltered. Hence, we do nothing to this qubit. In fact, we do nothing to the first t qubits as they are all 0 and 2 power t times b. The next block of qubits are then transformed as were done in the addition algorithm. But the last block of qubits contributes such that the bits of b are shifted by zeros. This is where the extended rotation we obtained will be needed. The following circuit obtains the quantum Fourier transformed qubits of A plus 2 power T times B. We start with the Fourier transformed qubits of A, and qubits of B. The last T qubits of the input are not modified. Next 10 qubits are transformed as an usual addition. The last 10 minus T qubits are rotated by shifted powers controlled by all qubits of B. At this point inverse Fourier transform will give the sum, but this is not what we want. Finally we need to control addition, that is, we need to allow addition to go through only when the control qubit is 1. This requires that we extend controlled rotation by an additional control qubit. That is, Rotation is applied to the target qubit only when the both the control bits are 1. This can be obtained using old controlled rotations using 2 cc not gates as follows. We use an extra qubit to store the product of the two control qubits A and B. This qubit is 1 only when both A and B are 1. Then use this extra qubit to control the rotation. Finally, use additional CC not gate to restore the intermediate qubit. The paper I referred for the algorithm for quantum multiplication does not provide any decomposition of the doubly controlled rotation. The previous decomposition is simple, but it uses an extra qubit. The following circuit I built does not require any additional qubit but it requires ability to rotate by one-fourth of the required angle. The controlled rotation gates introduce a phase factor to each other only when both A and B are 1. The circuit does not show general input as it makes the presentation complicated. Instead, I show two possible inputs of A and fix B to be 1. The third and fourth control gates introduce phase factors that add, then CC not gate flips 0 into 1 and vice versa, only when both A and B are 1. Finally, we use inverse rotations to introduce negative angles to change one state. When we take this factor common, the zero state has the required phase factor. The last CC not gate reverts 0 and 1 states. As an extra remark, CC not gate can be decomposed using only 2 qubit gates. Equipped with doubly controlled rotations, we can implement controlled quantum addition.
The only change in the circuit is the extra control qubit C, controlling the rotations. Finally, using N controlled addition gates, we can add N terms one by one to obtain multiplication. First apply the quantum Fourier transform to two N qubits each in state zero. Then successively apply controlled addition gates controlled by the bits of A. Finally apply inverse Fourier transform to obtain the desired product. This concludes the algorithm for quantum multiplication. If you like this content, please like, share and subscribe. Thank you for watching. See you in next video.